Okay, Net so we are going to be running our Anchor Lamp Framework environment. But one thing that I will recommend you, try to run the environment either on Mac or Linux. Windows, it's kind of unpredictable. I mean that the libraries, the dependencies that we are going to be installing, they're not that simple to set up. There's a lot of workarounds that we have to do. And it's not that easy to set up in the first place versus running this in Ubuntu. It's going to be very straightforward and you are going to see it. But if you have Windows, don't worry. What I'm going to do, I am going to show you how can we run a virtual machine inside Windows in which we will install Ubuntu 22.04. And from there, we will log in into that virtual machine and build our Anchor Lang framework environment. Okay, so I'm going to show you all that. We're going to build that virtual machine and we are going to be running Anchor Lang framework inside that virtual machine. If you already have either Mac or an Ubuntu machine and you already know how to do all this, you can skip to step number two, okay? So on the description, just click on step number two and you can go ahead and skip this particular section, okay? So let's go ahead. Let's set up the virtual machine. Let's install Ubuntu 22.04 and deploy the Anchor Lang framework environment. All right, let's go ahead. Let's do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I am going to download a desktop hypervisor, an application that allows me to virtualize another operating system on top. It's like I built another virtual machine and inside that virtual machine, I can install another operating system. It's like having another computer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a VMware workstation player, which is free. So all we have to do is just go to Google and type VMware player. Just type that. The first result, just click on that, then scroll to the bottom and then you can try Windows Workstation 17 player for Windows. Once you download this, install, then we will have the player ready for us to go. It's gonna look something like this, okay? So once you get that set up, you'll see this particular page right here, in which we will go ahead and set up our virtual machine. So under the player, once we open the player, we will select new virtual machine and we will go through this. The next thing that I need to obtain, it's going to be the ISO of the operating system. In this case, we are going to be installing Ubuntu 22.04. I know that Ubuntu as of now released 24.04. I'm going to tell you in the hypervisor, it doesn't work well. I think there's stuff that needs to be done in order for 2404 to properly be virtualized, but I will suggest you to stick to 2204 for now, okay? So let's find that image. I'm going to head to Google. So we are going to just type Ubuntu download, search first option, then you want to click check out alternative downloads, okay? So we click there and now we wanna find Ubuntu 2204. You go ahead and download it. And from there, we will obtain that ISO file and proceed to create our virtual machine. So let's go ahead and do that. So now when we open the application, we are going to be creating a new machine, right? Now it's asking me to provide that image, that ISO file that we downloaded, okay? And this will be the Ubuntu OS image, okay? So I already have mine pointed. Then all I'm going to do, I'm gonna click next and I'm going to personalize this install. I'm gonna say full name, it's gonna be net to def Username, net to def password, very simple. Click next and let's call this SPL VM as in virtual machine. Okay, so we're gonna click next. Uh, drive, we are going to allocate at least 40 gigs, at least, you know, you can go higher. I don't think we are going to need that amount, but just to be safe. And now we are going to be customizing the hardware because by default, the virtual hardware that we are allocating by default is not enough. Okay, so depending on your machine, you could be allocating as much as what your physical machine has available. Okay, so it has to be equal to what you have on your actual physical machine. So in this case, I'm going to put eight gigs of RAM. So I just slide this up to eight gigs of RAM. Then processors, I'm going to provide eight cores. That's it. And everything else should stay the same. So I'm gonna click close. I'm going to leave this check. So it's going to power up that virtual machine and it's going to start the OS installation. So we click finish. We wait for that to boot up. Okay, and something is happening, okay? So it's actually booting up the ISO. So let's wait for that to finish booting up. Okay, so we're gonna click English in my case, right? Just go through the normal setup. Okay, so we're gonna click normal install. If you want to download updates while installing Ubuntu, that's fine. Next, 
Okay, and now it looks like it downloaded the video graphics driver. So now we can see the screen full size. And I was asking me to erase the disk and install Ubuntu, which we will do. So we're gonna install now. Asking me to write the changes. I am going to write the changes and off it goes, okay? Let's wait for that to finish. Now it's asking me for the time zone. So you have to make sure that you set the time zone to where are you located, okay? Awesome, continue. And now we are going to provide the same name. For some reason, didn't catch the name, but we are just providing it again. The computer name is gonna be SPLVM, as we mentioned, then the password here. I don't care, it's a small password. And I'm gonna set to login automatically. I'm gonna click continue. Okay, so it has completed after several minutes, it has completed, okay? So now let's click restart and we should be ready to start preparing the environment, okay? Okay, so this is ready to go. What I'm gonna do now, I am going to skip this. Skip, do not send, and next, and done. Okay, so let me scale the the resolution so that we can see everything a little bit bigger. Well, let's see, in the display, there we go. We're going to scale this to 200% way better. Okay, so we're gonna keep changes. And now, yeah, let's continue. Okay, so we have the Ubuntu instance ready for us. Now, let's go ahead and set up the dependencies. Again, I am using Ubuntu 22.04. This will apply to Ubuntu or Linux or Mac. If you're doing Windows, I suggest you get a separate Linux distro virtual machine. Now, go into the video description and click on the GitHub repo, okay? So I, I have a link to the GitHub repo because I have all the syntax that we have to paste on the terminal and install all dependencies. Very simple, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to open my terminal, right? And at my terminal, we are going to go into super user because we are going to be installing dependencies, which means that we need administrator rights to do this. So, okay, sudo su, boom. Okay, and now we should be good. Looks way better. Okay, like I mentioned, let's go to the GitHub repo. As you can see here, I have everything in order. Okay, so the first thing, we are going to copy this. Let's go ahead and paste. Let's right click and paste. Press enter. Wait for that to finish. Cool, we're done with step one. I take good care of you guys, huh? Very easy. I did all the hard work into making this happen, so then you just copy and paste and off you go. Step two, install Rust. Just grab this and throw it there. Boom. Now it's asking me, proceed with standard installation, just press enter. And again, you can see this on the GitHub repo as well. Enter when prompted, okay? Done, step two is done, let me clear. Now step three, install Solana CLI, copy, paste, installing Solana CLI. Wait for that to finish and we continue this party. Done, cool. Now it's asking me for this, this is very important, okay? Because with this I can invoke the Solana CLI itself. If we don't add this to path, we will not be able to work with the Solana CLI. So make sure that we do this. So it says close and reopen your terminal to apply the path changes, okay? In my case, I like to go to the file and add it myself, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna select all this. And by the way, you have it on the GitHub. So you can see right here, this is the steps. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna update the path and we will add that path that was provided by us in the file for the profile, okay? For the profile that I'm using to log into the Ubuntu, but this is only relevant to Ubuntu, okay? So don't worry if you're doing Mac, it's not mandatory, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna grab this, copy. Now we are going to head all the way to the end, all the way to the end, okay? And we are now going to copy that line, copy this line, paste, okay? Now we're going to type control X and it's asking me to save. We're gonna press Y as in yes and press enter and we are done, okay? Now we should close and reopen the terminal, okay? But ideally you want to restart so you know that the configuration has been applied, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna restart by clicking on the upper right corner and restart. So power it up, power it off, restart, restart, and let's wait, let's continue. So what I'm gonna do now, restart it. Let me go terminal, let me zoom in, perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna say sudo su, one, two, three, four, five. Now go back to the steps. Next step is we are done with all this. We are going to install no yes. I'm gonna copy this. It's very straightforward. Paste, done. Next, do this. And as a matter of fact, you can just grab all, all of them at one and do it. 
Okay, okay, let me clear. And I think one more in step five. And yes, install the actual Node.js. Okay, paste. And it's installed. Okay, clear. Now step six. Also, we want to verify that it's installed. So let's go ahead and copy the command. Boom, installed. Beautiful. Step six, install yarn. So I'm going to copy this, install yarn. Boom. And it's asking me, yes. And don't, you can ignore this internal error. And I actually specify that in the GitHub. Don't worry about this error. You see it right here, ignore error. Okay. Now step seven, install anchor. This is where we finally install the framework. Okay. So we're going to copy this and let me clear this paste. Now we are installing anchor. Cool. Now we are going to do this clear. And I think there's one last step that we have to work, which is AVM install and use and we're done. Okie dokie. So we are done here. Let me clear. And now let's verify that we have the install setup. anchor version. Beautiful. So we have it. All right. So now that we have everything installed, now let's fund a Solana wallet. So let's build our Solana developer wallet and let's build our first project. Let's initialize our environment with a project, a demo project, so that we can test everything and make sure that we can talk to the Solana blockchain. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type Solana keygen and we're just going to type new. So it's going to create one new keygen and it's going to make that pair. And then we can grab the C face and save it in case we want to use that wallet for something. Okay, there we go. And it's asking me for an added security. If I want to generate my own passphrase, I can do it, but else I'm just going to press enter and done. This is the public key. Beautiful. So now with this, I can fund this account with test tokens. Easiest way for me, just copy this, go to a faucet, open my browser, and I'm just going to go Google and Solana Def Net Faucet, and just click this one. This should do it. There we go. And we are going to select the Def Net Faucet, paste that public key that we just got, and select five, and confirm the airdrop. Wait for that. Verify. Okay, so we got airdrop was successful. Now let me go to a block explorer. So scan. There we go. And let me put this in black. So I'm just gonna change here. Dark. Awesome. So now I am going to swap this to the devnet. And now let's paste that public key and see if that wallet is initialized. And sure enough, here's our, our five sold tokens. We're ready. Okay, so now what I gotta do, I am going to initialize our first anchor environment. Okay, so what I'm going to say is the following. I'm going to say clear. I'm going to type anchor in it. And then we are going to be naming the project. In this case, let's build one called demo net to def. And we'll press enter. It's asking me for the package directory, but disregard that. Okay, so what it's going to do is going to create a new folder. And that's the folder that we need to access or open in our Virtual Studio code. Okay, so we are just waiting for this to complete. And it has completed. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear and let's open Virtual Studio code. Code. Because this is a new Ubuntu install, what I'm going to do, I'm going to download Virtual Studio Code because I have the Ubuntu software or the Ubuntu app store. So I'm going to open that and just install code. Okay, and here it goes. Here's Virtual Studio Code. I'm going to install it here. It's asking me for my admin password. Enter, install. <clears throat> Sweet. So we have Virtual Studio Code installed. So now what I'm going to do, I am going to look for that. So hopefully it's here. Here we go. It's here. And I'm going to right click and add to favorites. I always have it here. And let's keep it dark modern. Change my extensions to something that I like. Um, so I'm going to add the icons. I'm going to change this to material icon. This library is very cool. It makes everything very neat. Okay, so we got the new icon set, Neon Knight. This one works. Okay, so let's use this one. It's going to look very cool. And we're just going to use this. Awesome. So now it's looking way better. Okay, awesome. I am going to do the following. Hopefully, here we go. I can go full screen now. And now let's open that folder. Remember, we are looking for my home folder, which is net to dev And this is our project folder. When we initialize Anchor in it, we created this folder because the name of the project is the folder. Okay, so we click on there we select and ladies and gentlemen this is the anchor development environment so we are going to be trusting trust all the author all right so now we know in the last video i spoke about the program folder and inside that folder we have a source folder this is the folder where the smart contract is going to be written okay which means that i am going to be writing the libdrs this will be our contract or our program okay the cargo is 
all the dependencies for this smart contract if we are going to be using Metaplex, if we're going to be interacting with any libraries, I will be specifying this in the cargo file. Okay, so in this case, I am going to leave everything default just as it is because I know that is going to work just fine. How can I confirm? We initialize this anchor lang environment. I am going to be building this environment. So if I type anchor build, it's going to compile the smart contract. And if everything went well, I can then anchor deploy. And that will deploy the smart contract and give us that program address. I'm saying smart contract, but it's program. It's, it's literally the same. Okay. So with that said, I am going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to open a new terminal from virtual studio code and we have direct access to that terminal here, which is awesome. Let me put it in full screen once again. So now we're going to go into super user. Beautiful. Now, because I'm inside this project folder, you can see it right here. I am going to type anchor and what it's going to do is going to grab the file that was already pre-made and that sample program file, the lib.rs, and it's going to compile this, that, that particular contract. Off we go. Let's wait for this to complete. Everything goes well. We'll type anchor deploy and we will be using the wallet that we generated. When we typed Solana Keygen new, that will be the developer wallet. I'm going to show you where that wallet is located. Okay. This will be the wallet that you will use to deploy. It. Okay. So when you're ready to deploy in the production or the mainnet, you are going to be funding that wallet with real soul tokens. Okay. And because this is the first thing that we initialize or we build a new project, it's going to be downloading some dependencies, but it's only one time. After that, it should be faster to do the build. Okay. The first build is going to take a little bit more time. And we have successfully built our first program. You can see that it's already telling us, hey, if you are not using this because it's not being used, this argument, if we go to that contract, if we go to that program, I should be saying that argument, it's not being used anywhere. It's just a placeholder. So it's telling us, hey, make sure that you underscore it. Okay. So this is following Rust in snake case. So you have to make sure that if it's not being used, then just put a underscore here. But again, this is just demo. Okay. Awesome. So we know that we have successfully built the program. So it has been compiled. So a target folder has been created with the build component. So everything that was compiled was thrown into the target folder. From here, we will have the compiled program that will be sent to the blockchain. Okay. So if we now go ahead and we also have a test folder that we're going to take a look in a bit, if we go on to deploy, then we should have the program available in DevNet. If we hit anchor deploy, then we should have the program deploy on the DevNet and then we can run that test. Okay. So if I go and type anchor deploy, it's going to apply to this particular program. Okay. So I'm going to say anchor deploy and it's asking me the cluster. Okay. So there's another thing that we can do, which is running the anchor local virtual blockchain or a demo blockchain or a emulator that will, that we can use to deploy the smart contracts locally. In my case, I am not doing that. I am deploying it on the definite. So it's a environment that can be used to test the smart contract that is live and is more realistic. Okay. So it's telling me I cannot deploy because this address is not active. Well, this address is my machine, which in this case, I am not running a virtual emulator or like I'm not running an emulated DevNet. Okay. So what I want to do, where do I change this is we go under anchor that Tom file. This is in the root of this project. We'll click there and add that DevNet entry on the project. So we type DevNet. We change this from local to DevNet. We control S and it's asking me to save, but because it doesn't have permissions, I have to provide those admin credentials and we should be good. Now let's try it and do it again. Anchor deploy and look at that. It's going through the deployment. It's going to the DevNet, sending the transaction. We should be getting that program ID very shortly. Boom. We got our first program deployed on the Solana DevNet. If we grab this address, we should see this alive already. Okay. So let's go back go to my browser. Let me go to the Explorer. Now we are making sure that you are in DevNet. And now let's go ahead and paste and search for that. And boom, there we go. So we got our first smart contract or program live deployed out of our working environment. Boom. We got ourselves the sample contract deployed. Okay. So we have built the anchor environment. We are now ready to deploy and run our programs. Now, the next video, what we're going to do, we're going to write that token smart contract, the SPL 
Solana token program. Okay, we are getting closer to the finish line. Alrighty, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more amazing content. Bye.